Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another awesome episode of Profiting with Nonprofits. Um, this week, we're sitting down with Daniel Jankovic, who is a video pro- um, video production um, specialist, spe- works with nonprofits, does creates wonderful videos for organizations. I've happened to work with a few clients who've used some of his videos. And we're going to be sitting down today talking all about video production and video and film and how it adds a whole nother layer and level to your organization and helps change the way you communicate your message and get your message out there to the world. Before we dive into the episode, this podcast is sponsored by C22 One, the an all-in-one nonprofit management and marketing system that we have actually built as a proprietary tool um, for small to medium-sized nonprofits who are looking to take their management, their organization, and their marketing to the next level. I'm going to drop a link to that in the comments and the show notes. So you can take a look at the C22 One system. It is perfect for small to medium-sized nonprofits who are looking to manage all their tools, all their emails, all their contacts, everything in one specific place without having to deal with all the headaches of other tools and platforms and multiple tabs open. So if you're technologically inept and you're a small to medium-sized nonprofit, take a look at the link I'm going to drop in the show notes and schedule a demo today. C22 One is our sponsor for this week's episodes. Oh, anyway. Anyways, welcome, Daniel. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I'm excited. I, you know, I connected with your wife um, about podcasting, and she mentioned that I should talk to you about having you on our show because you are the videographer extraordinaire. Um, you work with many different organizations, large and small. And, you know, I always love doing video. I actually, one of the things I used to do back in the day in high school was video production, video editing. So I have that skill. And I always found that making videos was another level of storytelling. And, you know, we see that in the for-profit world when you have explain when you have all sorts of types of videos and you have all sorts of types of media and, and things like that and how it really sells the product. Now with the nonprofit world, you're still selling a product, but you have to create a video that's going to have even more impact, a lasting impact. So what's your story? What's your deal? How'd you get into all this, especially the nonprofit space? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's interesting because I went to film school at USC, University of Southern California. I grew up loving movies and it wasn't until close to college that I realized, oh, I could actually get into the film business and do this for a living. So I went to this film school, which was the alma mater for people like George Lucas and um, you know some other very famous filmmakers, but I was very into Star Wars at the time. Mm. And when I graduated, I went into Hollywood and tried to work my way up the system in some small production companies, but it was a very slow process. And I was very distanced from the creative process of actually making content. And so I think when my daughter was born, she was uh, 2004, it came come about, about a year later after working for about three years in the industry, I decided to sort of jump ship and create my own business. Uh, originally it was converting old home videos to DVD and doing some editing of those videos. And within a few months of doing that, I was asked to do a a nonprofit promotional video for UCLA Hillel. And Hmm. that's what really kind of launched my career. Once I sort of got involved with something that was a bit of storytelling, but helping an organization share their vision and inspire their viewers, that's when I realized, oh, this is a great, a great space for me. And that kind of became my specialty for many years was doing nonprofit promotional videos for specific events. This was kind of before YouTube was really a thing. And so it was really more for these fundraiser gala events. Uh, And then also that kind of uh, evolved into doing videos for honorees for those events, people that were receiving sort of honorary, some kind of distinction award. And so we would do these short documentaries about people who were supporters or somehow contributed to the organization. And I became kind of the go-to specialist for that for many years in LA in the Jewish community. And since moving to Israel in 2015, I've sort of brought that over here and now become much more involved with Israeli businesses and institutions that have an international market, whether it's for fundraising or for marketing or for also their kind of special events where we produce content for an event, for some kind of showing. Well, that's awesome. So, so really you've been involved in this for, for quite some time and it really, and it's evolved. Your craft has evolved over the years. Um, when it comes to nonprofits who are looking to create a video, what, pro- what uh, you're involved in the entire creative process or you're, or you're just, you, you, or how does it work with you? Yeah. You know, when, with, with every client, it's different what they need, but I, we, we do run the full gamut turnkey solution where if somebody comes to us, they just have a idea or vision, you know, we can help them develop that idea into a concrete concept. 
uh, write a script if needed, or just kind of come up with the idea of what the video is going to be about, interview questions if we're going to be doing a lot of interviews. And then we do the production itself, meaning the filming, if we need special equipment or some kind of special cinematography, we can do that as well when it comes to things like gimbals where you have moving cameras or uh, aerial shots with drones. Hmm. And then we also handle the whole editing process when it comes to the editing of the video, but also motion graphics to kind of enhance it, special effects, voiceover recording, and music, of course, which is you know so much a, a crucial part of the emotional experience of the video. Correct. That's very cool. That's very, very cool. So what, when it comes to creating videos for nonprofits, you know, it's you're, again, the, essentially you're selling, you're trying to sell a product just like you're doing for any other business who wants to create a video. But what would you say is the differentiation with, within the nonprofit space and the for-profit space when it's coming to creating these type of assets? And how do you, how can people utilize these assets to really enhance their mission and drive more donors and revenue? Well, I think a lot of the world of nonprofit has to do with that emotional connection and the uh, impact they want to show that they're having. Um, when it comes to a for-profit, sometimes it's more about explaining the product or, you know, generating interest in people becoming, you know, users of the product or fans of the product. And so when it comes to nonprofit, there's something very emotional about the video you're you're aiming for you want to create an emotional response in the viewer to the point where you know hopefully they want to support that organization or get involved or somehow be connected to it for either a short time or a long time sometimes people become right. longtime donors based on that visual experience they had whether it's at an event and of course now online with you know youtube channels and and websites right. uh because you know when i think of the beginning that since that was so you know, that was so new at the time to have something on online, we thought of everything as more of a, we have five minutes to capture someone's attention and to really mm. touch their hearts and pull their heartstrings. How right. are we going to do that in the most optimal way? And so that was kind of the, the sort of way we created those videos in the beginning. We still do. Obviously, nowadays, the videos are much shorter, one yeah. to two minutes and um, you I, know, it does depend on the setting of where that video is playing. If it's meant for online, we know the attention spans are shorter, but if it's playing at a live event and you can create that theatrical experience, meaning the lights are going mm -hmm. down or sitting back, you have the ability to tell a longer form, longer format kind of story. Right. So I was going to say, how would you find that um, you, you've you adapted nowadays, you know, because now everything is social, everything, everyone, uh, organizations are trying to pivot towards social, especially now how the donation landscape is changing, where everything's more social giving. How would you say that the creative wise, you're doing that? And what are people requesting from you um, when it comes to these type of videos, when it comes to these type of things? Yeah, I think it's more common now that a client will want various cuts of a video. They'll have the the online version for their website, which will probably be a bit longer than their Facebook version or their um, Twitter version. You know, some of, and again, every client has their own platform that they really like to use. I have uh, one client that, you know, they're more in the politics space. So their platform is Twitter. And so their videos mm -hmm. have to be less than two minutes and 20 seconds. Anything longer, they can't post it directly to Twitter. So we always kind of think of how do we make those videos and get everything done within that time frame. Oh, wow. And you know, when it comes to things like Instagram or Facebook, even shorter, 30 seconds to a minute. Also, this idea of captions and putting text on screen is much more uh in demand right. than it used to be because those would people you that say that, I was gonna say, would you say that like kind of like distracts from people? I find that I've noticed that a lot, like the trends of videos nowadays, especially social long, like the longer ratio aspect, longer video ratios everyone's putting like texts and like the, the captions there. I was actually back and forth with this on with the project I'm working on for a landing page. We're doing a video and the guy I'm doing the project with, he's like, should we put captions? And I was like, I don't know because captions, you know, it, in the marketing world, we say less distraction, more action. Right. Hmm. So would you find that captions are a distraction or they enhance the the outcome of what's going to be with that creative mm -hmm. i mean i think my personal hunch is that the the text takes me out of the story i know every right. time even though if it's a, a film in english and i know what they're saying once that text is on screen my eyes constantly drift 
to the bottom of the screen where I'm reading the text, even though I don't need I, to. I totally and, get that. You know, I, I think totally it really pulls me out of the story. You know, it's funny because living here in Israel, anytime I go to see a film in the theater, mm-hmm. well, we've got the subtitles, even though I know what they're saying. And, right. um, you know, and, and they're in Hebrew. So it's almost like I'm I'm trying to know I had that last week. I had I went to go see a movie and, and the subtitles just popped up and I was like, oh, no, I'm going to follow the subtitles. Crap. Right. It's hard to sort of ignore them. And so I think it does depend on the platform. I understand the need for them on Instagram or Facebook if somebody's scrolling. And typically those videos don't start with the volume on. And, you know, for me, m- m- I'm much more interested in making films that are those kind of experiences where people are going to sit back, go for full sure. screen, turn up the sound and really appreciate everything that's involved there. Um, so I would say that's not really our mainstay is the whole social media, smaller, you know, formatted videos with bigger text, even though we do have some clients that request that and we do it and we we try to find creative ways of doing it. Um, it's also a matter right. of like being able to customize that text is sometimes if you if you were to use a program like Descript or um, some of these online right. programs that do the transcription, they do it in a nice way, but you can't customize it. You can't put your own font there. So we try to kind of make sure that it allows us to even match our, our clients' branding, their preferred font. Right. No, it's very interesting. And it, it, but again, like they it, it find like with social, but everyone's trying to jump on the same trends. So my, I guess, how would you differentiate yourself when, when people come to you for a video for your nonprofit, they're looking for more for the, the feature and less for the social stuff and more so like a website, a video for a website, a website, a video for something like an explain that that's kind of used for fundraising and promotional, less social aspect. Yeah. I think it's much more for the cinematic experience because for me, because I went to film school and I've, I have a passion for film and cinema, that's what I try to create is something that looks like you would see in the movie, the, the types of cameras we use, the types of lenses we use, the way we're going to edit it, the kind of music we're going to use, it's going to make you feel like you're watching a movie rather than, let's say, a TV show or a, a sitcom. And right. so it's it's just that's sort of the model that we really specialize in. Um, and then when it comes to Again, it doesn't mean we can't do the other kinds of formats that are quicker or more punchy or more about you know that social media experience, but it's not our bread and butter bread and butter, I would say. No, for sure. That makes sense. You got to do it, you got to do it what suits you and what works for for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and in terms of the storytelling, like do you find it more exciting to work with nonprofits? Because there's I, I mean, this is one of the reasons I pivoted to doing this, is because. I find that the mission driven people have more story to tell and there's a lot more to market based on this, the stories that they have behind them and why they're doing this. Do you Mm -hmm. find that similar into what you're doing? Yeah, I think that, you know, there are many nonprofits out there that are doing amazing work and they really are changing lives or changing the world in their own way. And to be a part of that process and to help shed a light on that and get it out there in a very professional way that that really resonates with me and, and that's sort of my calling i would say um when it comes to working with a business a for profit business i think they are they can be very exciting and very fun uh, i think it it it's a different kind of experience where you don't feel like you're highlighting how this is enhancing people's worlds or right. people's lives or helping you know communities that might be um you know needing help whether it's uh people special needs or underprivileged citizens or people who are dealing with hunger and starvation. Uh, that was kind of a, a project we did right around the middle of COVID. We did a project about people who were really suffering financially and, and yeah. how there was an organization out there helping them. But the story was really focused on the challenge that they're experiencing, like what it's like for them on a day-to-day basis where they don't know how they're making ends meet and they're, you know, been fired, not because of them, but because of the economic situation. So wow. that could be able, being able to sort of strike a chord and connect with that individual. It's much more awesome. that human experience. Yeah. No, for sure. And I do you, I find that with video also, like you, it adds, adds that element that like, you know, I mean, email, email and t- text and social and social posting, like they have different elements to them, but I feel like video adds that, that extra layer and that extra element to it. Whereas you can really connect with the, with the organization because you want, you know, when I, what I like to do when I, when I write email sequences for clients is I like to create this, build the storyline that people are living vicariously through the organization without actually being part of the organization. 
And I feel mm. like you can do that on, 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 on one level with email, but when it comes to video, I feel like that's, you can take that into a whole nother level and a whole nother dimension and, and really bring that out, you know, right. with, with that visual component to it. And with that um, audio component with the music and with like the effects that are, that are bringing people that are stimulating the senses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's almost like a full body experience. Whereas when you're dealing with just text, let's say for instance, like an email, you know, it's, it, it doesn't strike the chord in that, in that reader, the same way that a viewer can walk away and feel like, wow, that, that really got to me. No, yeah, for sure. Do you feel that like nowadays, but there's so many people can, anybody with an iPhone can create video. Do you think it's cheap and dear profession a bit? Like, I mean, to, like the people like people like you who have who really have the skills and know what how to make quality videos do you feel like that these organizations are finding that anybody with an iphone and and an, an iMovie can create like videos for them or their their people are still like want that professional level of quality yeah you know i i don't think it's cheapened um the world of video in 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 my world let's say i think that people that come to us they know what kind of level of sort of production quality they're looking for that you can't match on a iPhone or, you know, just doing, using some basic equipment. But I think it's unbelievable that people can do this. I see my children who are making amazing videos within minutes on their, uh, on their phones and, uh, you know, things that like really would be very complicated if we used the kind of software I use, but because they're using these apps that sort of do it all for you. Right. I, you know, I think it's, it's great. I think it's gotten this younger generation to start thinking in that format at a very young age, whereas growing up, you know, the ability to hold a video camera and actually edit that yeah. footage was a rare thing. You know, that wasn't a normal thing growing up. I actually was very lucky. My, my father's a neurologist and he videotapes his patients. And so growing up, we had an editing system in our home, which was, you know, unheard of. And so my first sort of chops I got with the editing was, taking home videos and editing them at home for my parents for some kind of like anniversary celebration. Um, wow. And so I got that exposure to young age about how to edit our, this generation is just, you know, from a very young age, they have that ability. Right. And so I think in a certain way, it's challenging us to work harder to think, how can we be creative or how can we sort of rise up to compete with that, even though it's a different production quality. Right. Um, but also to think, how can we be creative from a storytelling standpoint? And and well, keep I up think with that's I think that's also like the the biggest thing is the storytelling. How do you take something that like that's one dimensional and take and build that story from it? Like the a mission, like you go onto somebody's website and you see their mission. How do you take that mission statement and build mm-hmm. an entire story around it and build the components around it that are going to inspire, that are going to engage, and going to get people to interact? And mm-hmm. I think that's really where the creative, el- where like where the cre- the real creative element comes from in the video as well, being yeah. able to take that that plain plain level of the, what it says on paper and and bring it out. And how do you guys? How do you do that? Like what I'm assuming. I mean, I've seen some of the videos you made; they're freaking amazing. Like, thanks. Yeah, I mean, every again, like every client has their own taste and their own. Uh, vision of what they want. And and so part of our job is to help our clients really understand what they're trying to say, get very clear on it, and then find the best way to do that. And so sometimes that takes uh, a format that's much more like a documentary style where we're actually deciding we're going to interview certain people, we're going to film some specific footage or what we call B-roll, we're going to create some custom graphics, and we're going to kind of package it together that way. But then there's other clients where you really have to think about it in a different way, where it's, we're going to come up with a script that's a voiceover. We're going to think of some unique graphics or stock imagery to show. Uh, we might film things, but they're they're more ethereal rather than being specific people or specific actions. And right. um, that's another way to sort of package it together. No, it's cool. That's very, very cool. So what would you say for anybody who's looking, like when, if someone's looking to create a video for the organization, what would, what, did, what do you usually like tell people before they get involved with you? Like what type of questions do you usually ask them? What type of questions they usually ask you when it comes yeah. to doing this? I always start with the idea of let's work backwards here. What What's the main purpose of this video? What are you trying to do with it? 
Are you using it for a specific fundraising event? Are you using it for your website to get more people supporting your organization? Are you using it for private parlor type meetings? Right. And so that already helps us sort of hone in on, okay, so we know how it's being used. Then we have to figure out, well, what do we want to say in the video? Do you want to tell the whole story of the organization? Do you want to tell the history of the organization? Sometimes that's interesting. Um, or are we just talking about the programming that exists today? The lives are changing. You know, is it focused more on the people behind the company or is it the people who are being affected by the organization? So, you know, like right now I do a lot of work with uh, Hebrew University. And so every, there's even within that, we've done all these different kinds of videos for different purposes. One is the idea of sitting a professor down and having them try to tell us in five minutes or less, what's their main focus of research and how is it gonna change the world? Hmm. And we, we edit it together. And these are much more for the social world. Like I think their primary distribution is on Facebook, but okay. in two minutes or less, we can convey amazing research that's happening at Hebrew U and how it's impacting certain individuals or, or the uh, environment and help people walk away with a, a nice piece of information. Um, whereas, you know, a, a general promo video we, we just finished was much more about the grandiose vision of this university and how all the different components of it historically and today have really enhanced the state of Israel, but also the whole world. Cool. Yeah. So I guess it's really depending on what pe what what people's end end goal is, and then you kind of go from there. Yeah, awesome. exactly. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And and again, like video is it's a very powerful tool. I think a lot, I think most people most organizations are undervaluing video, especially because when it comes to budgeting, you know, you want a quality video. I think people are undervaluing video tremendously, and and they need to focus on creating good because with one video, one promo video, you can take that and turn it into multiple different forms of assets. You can yeah. you can create different pieces of content from it. And so like it, it really, it's an investment that's worthwhile to get involved in because then you have multiple pieces of content that you can pull apart and reuse for different places. So I think you know, definitely video is something that needs to be more valued within the nonprofit space. And, you know, I, I, you can attest to it. I mean, like you, you work with some very big organizations and very big universities that, that truly value the, the medium of video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes, you know, we'll have a client that needs it for a capital campaign and we make the video, they raise the money. And then, you know, a few years later, you see the building and you're like, oh, I, you know, that video probably played a role in that, you know, helping for sure. some of those donors decide this is a worthy cause, or I would love to have, you know, be a part of that project because of what I saw here. Do, do you think a bad video has repercussions like that? Meaning like, let's say, you know, a good video has a power to engage, has a power to tell a story, has a power to drive in funds. But what would you say a bad video, well produced, uh, like a not very well produced video has the opposite effect where it can really drive people away, it can really be a detriment. Like what would you say is considered a good video? And what would you consider is a bad video? Well, that's no, a great question because, uh, you know, up until a few years ago, I would say low production quality videos, I think they did damage the sort of the reputation or, or maybe the, the look of that organization that was putting that out there. Meaning it could negatively impact their fundraising ability. If somebody sees a poorly produced video, they might just be turned off. They might not wanna be a part of something that seems like it's not being well run or they're not investing their money the right way. Whereas you know, a video that has that, that high production value that's well put together, will impress the viewer. Now, now there's a catch 22 because then the yeah. viewer can say, Hey, wait a minute, all the money's going to this nice video. It's not going to like the action or the, the programming. Right. Maybe, maybe that's a worthy argument, but at the same time, I think that, you know, an organization does need to constantly fuel that fundraising engine to make it all work and to continue yep. to have those budgets to, to, you know, support their staff and provide the programming that they're doing. So I always feel that it's worth the investment. Um, there are some clients when I provide a proposal, they might be a little shocked, you know, sticker shock. Uh, and, and then I have to explain to them, look, this investment is going to be recouped. It's going to help you achieve your goals tenfold, maybe. Like there's, you know, these kind yeah. of cases we've done where it really has pushed them, whether it's fundraising or their live events where they show these videos and people were so moved that they gave more than they were expecting. And yeah. I just think, um, you know, I think it's, it's, 
it usually doesn't take much convincing these days to help people understand the power video and how if you if you go a cheaper route or you try to do it all in-house mm -hmm. it might not always turn out for the best and it might be even kind of backfiring because you've wasted all the time and energy and now you've got a poorly produced video that you can't really use and it doesn't do what you want it to do yeah 100 percent well, you know, this was a lot of fun. I'm happy that we had a chance to sit down and talk. I guess my only other question to you would be, um, you know, one, how do people get in touch with you? And two, what would what would you say makes you makes you unique over all the other video production guys out there um, in the nonprofit space? Yeah, well, I guess starting with the latter, I mean, I think when it comes to how we're different, uh, first, it's our ability to really work hand in hand with our clients. I think there are other video professionals that don't want to engage their clients input or, or kind of involve them in the process as much, or they don't appreciate the, the client's input. Now, I always come back to the idea that uh, I mentioned Star Wars earlier and how I loved yeah. Star Wars growing up. And, and mm -hmm. you know, there are people out there in the world, many people who, who don't like Star Wars at all. And I remember mm -hmm. I used to be shocked, like, how is it possible to not like one of the greatest movies of all time? But in working with various clients, I realized everyone's got different taste. Everyone yeah. has their own way of seeing what's a good video. And we're not always right about that when it comes to our clients' specific taste and, and you know audience that they know best. And so every client is a learning process for us where we want to learn. We mm -hmm. want to get almost like become part of their company, be part of, become part of their organization so that we understand who those people are we're speaking to. And so that's kind of one way we differ differentiate ourselves is we really try to get to know our clients become very close with them and their audience before we even get anywhere close to the filmmaking process. That's awesome. um, and then, you know, when it comes to the filmmaking itself, I think we, we really pride ourselves on being trying to achieve this cinematic look, which is something that, you know, I, we, it's almost like we, we don't want to do anything less than that. Um, right. Anything that won't, reflect well not only on our clients but on us as producers of cinematic looking content content that really has strong feeling um you know so that, that's kind of the the sort of way that we try to differentiate ourselves and also nowadays because we're in israel this kind of it's almost been a a, a multi-year pivot here but to be able to help israeli companies organizations connect with that western world because of oh, my sure. background from you know los angeles and hollywood and American. And so when I work with organizations that they want to be a part of that world, but they're not from that world, they might be, you know, born and raised in Israel. Right. And so that's where you can kind of come help be that sort of bridge to the, to that world over there. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Thank so, God. So I guess that, I guess the last question is how do people get in touch with you? If anybody wants yeah, to. Yeah. So, the, you know, I'm, my website's keshervideo.com and okay. that's a great way to find me. And um, all, all our information is there. I, lo I, lo I love the name for some of our audience members who are not um, based in Israel. Um, Kesher in Hebrew means connection. And I yeah. think that's very, very cool that you're, you know, what you're doing is you're building connections with people who are, who you're creating the product for to help them build a connection with their audience to help them gr grow their audience and gain more more donors. Yeah. Did you ever think about that? No, of course. Of course, that's definitely the the genesis of the idea yeah. is uh, you know, being able to connect them to their audience. That's kind of our one of our sort of taglines. Um and and maintaining that connection. And that that's where, you know, I think that we have certain clients that they come to us for one video and then they're they're gone for a while. They only need that one video, but there's other clients that realize the power of ongoing video content, it doesn't always have to be these high end production or high, let's say high, um, high story, high concept right. videos. Sometimes it could be very simple documentaries about the work they're doing or about the people they're helping, right. uh, but the ongoing content maintains that connection. I think that's where it kind of connects with the social media world, even though the content's meant not specifically for social media, but it can be broadcast there and maintain those connections and build stronger connections. That's very awesome. That's very, very awesome. Well, yeah, Daniel, so we got to get, get everyone connected. For sure. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on today. I'm happy we did this. I'm happy we connected and, and we made a Kesher. Um, and um, this is going to be great because a lot of people have been asking me about to talk about video, a lot to, to learn more in depth about video, especially since people are starting to do fundraising campaigns now. And so 
definitely something cool that we talked about. So I, I, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is after we do this, I'm going to put your contact information in the show notes and anybody who's looking to get in touch with Daniel, who's looking to do a video, feel free to reach out to them. They do great work. I've actually worked with the clients who have used them before and they do fantastic work and you will not be disappointed. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. All the best.